welcome to this week's episode, which I'm very excited about, all on how to make money as a creative. And I'm going to share three tips for creatives to make money doing what you love with a little bit of my own experience and also, you know, things that I've seen my clients succeed at and the many different um, creatives that I've worked with over the last four years in my business as a coach. So number one is my advice in absolutely all times, everything, everywhere, all the time, always, always, always is to lead with your desire because no matter what you choose, you're going to have to do the work, right? (laughs) Like a lot of people talk about ease and let's be clear that you can be very leaned back and still create epic results, but action is required And ease really comes from alignment. Like ease comes from when, and we're going to talk about this more in the next tip, you're following the path of least resistance. You're following what you enjoy the most. You're following what you desire the most. And you're doing it in ways that are the path of least resistance to you. So this is applicable whether you are a seasoned entrepreneur and you're looking to have more fun, have more creative freedom in your business or if you're new to entrepreneurship, or if you're an artist entrepreneur, um, or anybody really, like focus on the things that you love, lead with your desire, because the work is always going to be easier when you're genuinely invested and you're passionate in it. So the other thing that I've seen play out over and over and over again, is that when you follow the things that you genuinely desire, 100%, those things work out easier then trying to force yourself to do something that you aren't really aligned with, that you genuinely like don't really desire or you're doing because you think you should. Follow what you desire. And, you know, is it going to be easy off the bat? Is it going to work out like magic off the bat? Probably not, but it will be fun, right? If we don't judge ourselves, if we don't judge the process, if we don't mean, you know, an initial lack of results to mean that we're not capable or that what we desire isn't possible. Because one thing that I've seen in myself and in my clients over and over and over again, is that our desires do not go away. They do change, they do evolve, but they never fully go away. So lead with your desire, trust your desire. It's there for a reason. We all desire different things. So it's pointing you somewhere down a specific path for a very specific reason. Usually that it's going to be really fun when that works out for you, when you actually give it a chance to work out. So that's tip number one, just go ahead and dive in, do what you truly desire to be doing with your time and energy and figure it out as you go along. So the next tip is to follow the path of least resistance. And really what, you know, this is an Abraham Hicks phrase, but really what this means is starting with what you believe is possible. Because for example, if you start out being like, I'm going to be a millionaire, YouTube creator. And then you make a video and then nobody watches it. And your mind might be like, this isn't true. Like this isn't possible for me. I doubt that this is possible. Um, you know, unless you really have conviction, want to go all in and, and until it works, nothing ever fails if you never give up. Right. So But there's going to be a path of least resistance away. And this is the cool thing about money, right? Is that we need a consistent flow of it. So it does channel, it challenges us to um, to really evolve and to really build our skills and to really get creative and be resourceful and to get outside of our comfort zone, which is where all the the fun happens. That's where all the growth happens. That's where you get everything that you need in order to realize those big, amazing dreams that you really desire. So start with what you believe is possible. And, you know, for me, this is what this looked like. When I knew that I wanted to have more creative freedom, I wanted to work with people who valued me and appreciated me for who I was, for my creativity, for my intellect, for um, my ideas, um, for my strategic thought. I had no idea what that was going to look like. That was just like a desire deep in my bones that I wanted to experience because I wasn't getting that when I was working on film crews. And when I burnt out and, you know, I put all of my stuff in storage, knew that I was never going back to that industry because I, you know, was committed to finding that freedom. 
And I thought I was going to have to retrain, take a bunch of courses, which, you know, obviously I did in the end, but I was able to start earning money so much sooner than I thought. Literally within a few weeks, I had found a new way to make money, which was initially editing and then writing, which eventually evolved into um, you know, my dream business where I have so much time to do all the things that I want. I have the resources, I have the freedom, everything is fun, everything is in alignment. You know, yes, obviously there is there's still growth and there's still challenges on the way to my next level. But um, you know, the life of my dreams unfolded from one step at a time. And just really following that and seeing an opportunity. And even if I wasn't fully 100 percent sold on that opportunity as like this is the thing. It was exciting enough. That little spark was there enough for me to really pursue that and to take that step and to give it a try and to try it on. And inevitably, that step led to another step, led to another step. So whatever the path of least resistance is, so really finding that place where, you know, it's exciting, like it's exciting enough for you to go all in on it. And, you know, the belief is there that this can work for you. And it's moving you in the direction of that big desire, even if it's not all the way there yet. Because what's going to happen is in taking that path of least resistance step, not only do you build a skill that actually you're going to need in that big picture vision down the road, but really what's happening is you're building belief in the process, which brings me along to my next tip, which is to build your belief one step at a time. So there has to be a belief that you can at least make some progress in the thing, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't take action on it. So when you find that alignment with something that you desire, with the belief that it is in some realm of possibility going to pan out for you, even if it takes a few tries, even if, um, you know, you like need some help along the way even if it might take a bit of persistence and determination and grit in order to really fully make that work, you still believe that you're capable and you're possible of it. It's possible without sacrificing the things that you're unwilling to sacrifice. This is also an important caveat, right? Because if you're listening to this, likely you're not willing to sacrifice things that you don't want to sacrifice. Like you want to call the shots. You want to make decisions around your values and the things that make you feel good. Because otherwise, what's the point in getting into business, right? We have unlimited opportunity. So building your belief one step at a time, and maybe this just for you is around raising your prices, like doing the exact same work that you have been doing, but just simply asking for more money so that it takes it to that next level of fulfillment and, you know, gives you some more resources to maybe put into a new income stream. So this is the thing about being creative, right, is we get to work with multiple different income streams and, you know, get clear on what some of those are for you, because you likely have many of them, whether you have, you know, an existing business or an income stream, um, like an entrepreneurial income stream, or you're just starting out to build that, that there are the ones that, you know, you know, like pretty much guaranteed or highly confident you can create money in that way because you've either already been doing it or, you know, it's like maybe not that exciting dream come true desire for you, but you've seen loads of other people do it. So you believe it's possible and you're like, "Mm, this is a path that, you know, this is a step in the right direction. This is leading me to either more freedom or more money or more alignment or all of those things. Right. And then we have those income streams that are like dream come true income streams. Like I work with a lot of um, musicians and singer songwriters who are making albums and, you know, maybe working with grants or supporting themselves through their teaching and coaching. And, you know, the absolute dream income stream would be to be getting paid um, for their album and earning money through album sales or through streaming royalties or through, you know, licensing and actually be earning money for the music that they're creating. And, you know, that has a whole business side to it that takes a little bit of time to figure out and to establish also, you know, building the musical skill to get your work to a place where, you know, and getting your PR and building your audience and all of those things, just like any other business. And then there's, you know, teaching and like um, money for time work or freelancing that most people need help with and is like very low 
resistance for people to pay for something when you're going to help them very specifically with something, right? Like these very proven, easy, accessible, available income streams like teaching um, or like service-based um, freelance work, like writing. And so you get to play with all of them. Like in the beginning for me, when I first started out as an entrepreneur, I was trying all the things. Like I had editing gigs on um, Fiverr.com, which is a freelance website. I listed copywriting gigs. Once I discovered that was a thing, I didn't even know that was a thing (laughs) until I saw other people doing gigs and saw that they were pricing it higher. And I was like, hmm, I think I could do that. Figured it out along the way, one client at a time. And then I I was writing song lyrics for other artists. That was another gig I was doing. I was doing voiceovers for... um, for commercials. Um, and I put so many different types of gigs up. I was writing bios for people. I was writing sales pages for people. Um, every different type of service that could potentially be an income stream, I tried it, right? And I noticed the thing that the things that I was really good at, the things that were really in demand and the things that made me the most money. Um, you know, like the time for money earned ratio was like the most fulfilling for me. And that ended up being copywriting. I even ended up letting go of all of the other things. And I ended up, you know, taking that time back for myself to start writing my own songs and um, learning music production and just exploring that creatively for my own joy, um, which was always, you know, the intention of my business was to just give me more creative freedom to do whatever the hell I wanted to do. And that I wasn't just giving all of my time and creative energy away for, for, for a paycheck. And then that eventually evolved and turned into my coaching business where I created scalable group programs where I could sell more and more and more places without having to spend more and more and more time. I let go of the copywriting contracts. I created, you know, courses that I sell as a passive income. And, you know, this was just one step at a time that following the path of least resistance, just being curious, trying different things and having that clear goal And that was my desire, like leading with my desire, how I wanted to feel, what type of work I wanted to be doing, how I wanted to be working, what I wanted my life to look like and holding that vision and continuing to work towards it. And, you know, sometimes it can feel like you're moving in a different direction, but really trusting that inner voice that's nudging you or those ideas that perpetually come up again and again and again. And just watch as things unfold very, very quickly and you start to leave behind things that aren't enjoyable and things that, you know, constantly replacing things that aren't that great with things that are a little bit better. And then doing that over and over and over and over again. And then your life is a completely different place than it was a year ago, two years ago. So follow your desire, follow your intuition, follow the path of least resistance. So you're not constantly grappling with imposter syndrome, or you don't believe that something is possible enough so that you're not even taking any action. You have to believe it's possible enough to take consistent action, build your faith in the process, build your belief in the process and belief in yourself that whatever it is you set your sights on, you can create. And then you can continue to set the bar higher and higher and higher in terms of making more money, having more time freedom, having more alignment with working more on jobs that you love and, you know, kicking, um, uh, getting rid of jobs that you don't love or types of work or clients that you don't love. And this is a constant incremental tweak to more money, to more fun and to more freedom. So Notice what comes up for you around this conversation. Do a big brain dump of all of the ideas. Do those like dream come true income streams that would be so creatively fulfilling that you would love to be making money through. And then do the ones where you're like, this is like, I believe that this is possible for me and it would definitely be an improvement. And I'm willing to, you know, raise my prices around that or like put myself out there in more of a courageous way around that or really commit to doing the work to get this income stream off the ground. And taking those, um, taking those consistent actions and building those rivers of abundance in creative income streams that are as fun for you as they are for the people who pay you. And if this is a conversation that you're really excited to go deeper on, I'm very excited to announce a live round of Create Money the Fun Way, which I'm launching, begins our first week is February 14th on Valentine's Day. Um, but if you hop in before then there's bonuses and pre-work, and I'm going to open up the Voxer group chat to really start to build the momentum on this money mindset work. That's going to help you get really clear on 
shifting the limiting beliefs that were standing in between you and you really believing that what you want is actually possible enough to start taking action on it, to actually start building results in the ways that you desire to be having results in the way that you're making money, whatever that looks like for you, and really letting go of limiting limiting narratives around what's possible for you. So you can fully step into your creativity, fully step into making money in the ways that you desire to be making money in and really learning to trust that if you desire it, 100% it's possible. Probably isn't going to look like what you might expect, but you can be having so much more fun, making so much more money, having so much more creative freedom, emotional freedom, health freedom, time freedom, location freedom, whatever kind of freedom you want to be experiencing in your life thanks to, you know, being creative in your relationship with money, being creative in the way that you are generating income streams. So this is the exact money mindset tools that got me from super broke, undercharging to doubling my income three years in a row, hitting my first six figure year, having more time freedom than ever before for my creative projects. And has helped so many of my clients to do the same, to double their income, to take time out, to invest more in their creative projects, to work, you know, clear more um, hours off their calendar, have way more freedom and way more fun than ever before, simply by getting clear on what you want and then clearing out all the crap that is in resistance to that or doesn't believe that that's possible. So go to withsaramack.com and check out Create Money the Fun Way under the Work With Me tab. There is also um, an application for scholarship for anyone who's low income, LGBTQ or BIPOC. And please do reach out um, if you think that may apply to you, but you're not even sure. I encourage you to apply. To apply. And I'm so excited to dive in more to this work with more people. So thank you so much for listening. Please do reach out and share any insights or takeaways or breakthroughs that came through for you in listening to this episode today. And we'll see you next week. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.